This video is about my lab mastering. They call it different things depending on what you're taking. So if you're in a math class, they call it my math lab. If you're in statistics, they call it my stat lab. If you're in a psychology course, they call it my psych lab. So um, it's all the same site. I'm just going to create one video um, for both my math courses and my stat courses because they're basically the same. It's the same website. So if you've used this website before, you can go ahead and sign in using your old username and password, and then you can just add another course using the course ID that I will provide for you in another document. If you have not used this website before, then you want to go ahead and register as a student, and it just steps you through the process, and there are also detailed instructions that are posted on D2L that you can follow along with about how to do that. You do need to have three things. You need a valid email address. You will need a course ID that I will provide for you. And then you will also need a registration code. And the registration code you can either purchase right while you're registering for the website, or um, you can also purchase it in the bookstore at Inver Hills. Some students have purchased them online. Just a word of caution, the codes are only good for one activation. So if someone's selling you a used code, then you're out that money. So you might want to just be careful about buying like an old code from online somewhere. So just be cautious of that. Um, personally, I would just either buy it from the bookstore or right while I'm registering. Um, but you can sometimes find them cheaper online. So, so students do do that from time to time. Once you're registered, then go ahead and click sign in. And also when you're registering, make sure that the name that you enter there matches whatever name is in D2L so that I can um, enter your grades from this website into D2L for you. Um, if you use a different name, then it's sometimes difficult for me to figure out um, who you are in D2L. You should have at least our course listed in this area once you log in. And so I use this um, every time I teach a course, so I have a whole bunch of them. Um, we're going to just go ahead and go into this um, statistics course and take a look at that. The look and feel of all courses in this website basically look the same. Um, so it won't matter whether you're in a stat course or an algebra course. The very first thing that you're going to want to do when you log into this website for the first time is go through this browser check. Um, so here's the link to the browser check right here. So make sure that you click on here. There are some plugins that your computer must have in order for things to function properly on this website. So go ahead and click on that. Follow the instructions. Um, it just steps you through everything. If for whatever reason it seems like the, it's just paused and not doing anything, check up top here. And if there's a yellow bar, then click on that and then it's usually like allow an active X player or something like that or allow pop-ups, something up there um, that will allow you to continue um, through the browser check. So make sure that you um, do that. The next thing is um, assignments. You won't really need, I won't use the announcements in my math lab or my stat lab. You'll get all of your announcements in the D2L website for this course. So go ahead and click on assignments. This is the area that you will be in the most. This is the area where you will find all of your practice homework problems. And also you will find your quizzes. So um, there's a orientation to my math lab or my stat lab. Um, it goes through sort of um, how to enter answers in. So that would be a great thing for you to go through right away. We're going to go ahead and click on one of the later homework assignments so that I can show you around a homework assignment. So it will um, bring up all of the questions on that homework assignment. And then you can click on one. And then we could go ahead and complete this assignment. So here it shows you that there's one part remaining. It does have a bar, a progress bar on the bottom here. And so the first one is a multiple choice, and that's just to create, match this um, frequency, di 
frequency chart to um, its histogram. So um, we will go ahead and look at what our options are. And I'm just going to make this bigger so that we can see all of the options better. And you can also click on this whenever you have a graph. You can click on this plus symbol and it will make the image larger. And then if we click on OK, it will take it away. So I'm going to select that one, even though I can clearly see that that's not it, right? Because all of these heights are close to around 15, but these numbers are not. So I'm not going to go into why this is not the correct answer, but I want to purposely get it wrong. So I got it wrong. Um, and now because this is multiple choice, I'm only getting two shots at it. Normally you get three on something where you're entering in your answer. So I'm just going to click final check. And so it tells me the correct answer and it tells me what I answered. And then when I click OK, so now I need to complete this sentence. So there's a drop down box. And so I'm just going to, I'm not even going to read it. I just, I'm going to check some things. So I got it wrong. In this part, I, I actually got correct. So now it won't See, I can't select that, but this one I got wrong, and so um, it doesn't really matter if I get it right or wrong. I'm not worried about that. So again, it's going to let me try one more time, and then a final check. So it told me what the correct answer is, and also how I answered it. So now I can either click Similar Exercise, um, or I can go on to the next question. So if I select Similar Exercise, it will slightly change the numbers in the problem, and then it will allow me to do this problem over again. So we can see that these frequencies are going down. And so that's what I want my chart to be doing. And so that's going to be D. Check answer. It says, good job. It might say great. It might say well done. Click on OK. Now, one other thing it, before I get it correct is that when you go back up here, if you click on here, you can see the list of problems again and you can jump between them in here if you'd like but see it's showing that so now I've got part of it correct because I just fixed it but the red X will show me that I've got it wrong so now when I get this all correct that that will change to a just a big green check mark so the histogram has um, a longer right tail so the distribution is skewed to the right. And check answer, and fantastic, I got it correct. And now when I go up here and click on this, see now this is a green check mark. So if I had gone in here before I corrected part of it, it would have just been a big red X. So that's um, how you do things in the homework. The quizzes work exactly the same, except for you don't see the results until you finish every problem. And also in homework, you have this question help option. So there's a help me solve this. Um, a lot of times there is also a show me an example. Um, I don't know why there isn't on this one. I'll try to see if there's one. Oops, that's the same problem on question two here. So here it is. So help me solve this. We'll step you through how to do this exact problem. View an ex and so then when you get done with it, it's like you got it wrong. So then you'll have to do a similar exercise because it's going to step you through this exact problem. View an example will bring you through a problem that's similar to this one and leave this problem that you're working on the same as it is. So again, this first one is going to change the problem you're currently working on. This one will not. So it just depends on how you want to do it. You can also go to a video um, that shows you how to do this particular problem. There's not going to be videos for every homework problem, but there will be for some. There should also be um, a link to go to StatCrunch. So if you're doing something where you need technology to finish the problem. And this is only for if you're in a statistics course. This, of course, won't be there if you're in, in an algebra course. There's some tech help. I haven't looked into that, so I'm not exactly sure what's in there. But And this link is really great, this Ask My Instructor link. This will send me a link so that when I click on the link, I will see this screen, this homework problem, so that you can just ask me the question that you have about the problem versus having to type up the whole problem. 
And then the very last one here is so that you can print out a homework assignment. You could go complete it somewhere else and then come back to the computer and enter in your answers if you would prefer to do it that way. So that's about the homework. And then um, let's just go take a look at a quiz so that you can see what a quiz looks like. So I'm just going to click on assignments again and that will bring me back to my list and I'll go into the chapter 2 quiz and then click on start test. So here you can jump from question to question if you want. You won't see however um, whether you have it correct or not until after you click submit quiz and Again, there's no help option when you're taking a quiz either. So let's enter in um, at least a few answers. To some problems here. And you see it's giving me a warning because I'm progressing to the next problem and so I haven't completed it. There's more parts so let's just scroll down here. So there's multiple parts to this problem. So now I've finished the whole problem. So there now I've answered a bunch, bunch of them. I want to submit my quiz. And now um, all of these dark X's means that I answered the problem but got it wrong. A smaller X with parentheses around it means that I didn't answer the question. A green check means that I got it correct. So again, I was just throwing answers in there, not answering them all, you know, completely, um, just so that you can see what this looks like. <clears throat> you can review your test. So this will have the correct answer marked. Um, let's go to one that I answered but got wrong. So it will show me the what I answered <clears throat> and it will show me the correct answer. So um, I don't think that I entered in any numbers for these unfortunately. If you enter in a number then you would have to hover over or click on it and then it would show you what you answered but what it normally shows is the correct answer to the problem um, when you're reviewing it. Um, it. When you're in review mode you do have some help available. You can either ask me a question which will send me a, an email with a link to this particular problem or you can print off the assignment or print off the um, quiz and it will have the correct answers in there so that you can correct all the questions on the quiz and then when you retake it um, you'll have an example of every quiz question. So, um, so that's a little bit about the quizzes. If you have any questions about quizzes just let me know. The study plan is a really great place for you to go to get some extra practice if you need it. It's not required, however, it's just there for you to utilize if you would like to. There's also a gradebook in here. Um, if we click on the gradebook, we can see, um, you know, how terrible I've done. I can see what I've done and what my scores were um, on those, and you can review all of them when you're in here as well. If you're in a stat course, you will have stat crunch. We'll talk about stat crunch in um, lecture videos. Um, so we'll go through some things in there. There's also a link to the e-textbook. So the e-textbook is really a great resource for you. There's a place where you can click on problems to work on there to get practice if you'd like. So we'll just go into that and take a look. So along the side here we can click on the chapter that we want to go to and, um, and what section. And so whenever you see this symbol it means that there's a video that you can click on and watch. There's another video. And I'm looking for um, a you practice it button. So this symbol right here with a triangle will bring up an example for me to try. In fact, I think, yeah, so this is just like um, a homework question. So you can, it has some help buttons here too as well that you can use. So that's 
um, a really nice feature. So again, I think these videos are ones that the author has created. Um, he has other people that help him out as well. And so you can go through different, click on whatever objective you wanna go to. So with to our watch. first definition that we're going so, to look at, we're gonna talk about the range of a set of data. So that is a little example of um, a video clip from the textbook. And again, he has um, various people um, making the videos. So they're pretty good videos if you wanted to watch those. And let's see, the e-textbook, there's also a multimedia library. So we'll go take a look at the multimedia library. So that's this next, this link way down here. And in here you can get to section video lectures. Um, there is um, some guided learning videos. There's technology, there's all kinds of videos in here. There's PowerPoint slides. There's access to the textbook in here. Um, so all kinds of great resources that you can get um, in this area. So you could pull up all of the resources. You could select your chapter and the section. You can just select one of these if you want. So you could select all of them or you can just select a particular one that you wanted to bring up. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that you knew of this resource as well because it's a really great place for you to um, find some additional help on some things if you need it. So, so that is the basics of uh, my math lab or my stat lab. Uh, if you have any questions about this, just let me know and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks.